Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We have over 500 <coughs> registrations. This is part of the um, overall work that we are going to do in terms of the Smart Sector Integration Initiative. Um, we see that there's three basic pillars in this um, package. One is making the, or connecting the gas and electricity market, and that will be the, the key part of the smart sector integration. Um, and that you have the guarantees of origin, the energy tax directive, and on the 29th of May, we will be having a webinar on that issue. The second one is making the decarbonized and renewable gas markets work in practice. We'll need to have an internal market for gas in the future, and that gives rise to issues of interoperability, third party access for hydrogen and CO2 networks. And then there's a third pillar, which is what we're focusing on today. And that is that we know in 2050, we're gonna need an awful lot of renewable and decarbonized gas. It's impossible to say how much. We know there are some things that renewable electricity will not be able to do. It's not energy dense enough. And there is some things that um, decarbonized and renewable gas can't do, and will certainly be electricity, renewable electricity. But there's a middle ground where both will be able to compete. And so the basis of a uh, smart sector integration is a market where all forms, um, vectors of energy compete with each other on a level playing field. So in this third pillar of the smart sector integration, the commission has realized that being as we're going to need an awful lot of decarbonized and renewable um, energy gas in 2050 and beyond, we need to kickstart this market now in the same way as we have done for the renewable market in order to get the cost down. And also because you can't wait until 2050 in order to start developing the infrastructure markets for this amount of gas. And so the subject of today's discussion is how to do that kickstarting in the best way. And you can kickstart in four ways. You can do research and development and de demonstration. You can do national targets and fees and tariffs or contract for difference. You can do blending obligations. And you can expand the emissions trading system into energy intensive industry with carbon border tax. Now, in order to know which approach to take in this respect, and on the other issues, it's very important that the EU takes a fact-based understanding because, for example, if the ETS price that you need in order to get green and renewable hydrogen, uh, sorry, renewable and um, decarbonized hydrogen into the market is 100 euros a tonne, obviously you have to have a different approach than if it's 50 euros a tonne. Um, and we feel there's a great deal of misunderstanding about the different technologies and the different opportunities that these different technologies we um, will have in the future market. And so today's seminar and the one next week is our effort in some small way to contribute to a, a real understanding of the different technologies. So we hope today and next Wednesday to understand these different technologies a little better, to understand their potential, to understand their constraints and bottlenecks and what needs to be done to overcome them. And so we have a, I mean, a wonderful lineup of speakers today, and I'd like to thank them all for joining us. Um, we have representatives from the three commission departments who will be centered to this, uh, DG Research and Innovation, DG Energy, and DG Climate. Then we have a section on pyrolysis, um, and I will introduce the speakers there. And then we have a section on steam methane reforming and carbon capture and storage. Next Wednesday, we have one on renewable hydrogen. If you're asking why the specific order that Andres and I have chosen to have this, uh, we tossed a coin. It's that simple. So please don't take any understanding of why we're doing one thing before another. Um, so what we're hoping today, as I say, is to get a little more understanding of these different technologies in detail, their potential, and what are the barriers that need to be overcome in order to, for them to reach their potential. So first of all, I'd like to give the floor to our three representatives from the commission to explain a little bit of the view that they have regarding 
green and renewable hydrogen in these markets and how they see the development policy in their areas.